Hey guys, it's Chris. From plants that smell like death to those that are out to get you, here are nine of the strangest plants on Earth. Number nine, the corpse flower. Despite its name, the corpse flower is not a flower that's dying. And actually, it's not a singular flower either. Rather, it's a combination of thousands of male and female flowers that grow together to form this massive structure. It's actually one of the largest flower structures in the world today as well as one of the rarest in the world. It grows in the tropical regions of Asia, for example, Sumatra. As for how it actually got its name, well, that would be due to its smell. The corpse flower emits an odor that actually does smell like rotting flesh, which is pretty intense, as you can imagine, but only when it's in bloom. That may sound like a weird trait to have, but it's actually essential to the plant's survival. Tim Pollack, outdoor floriculturalist at the Chicago Botanic Gardens, noted the following. The smell, color, and even temperature of corpse flowers are meant to attract pollinators and help ensure the continuation of the species. Such insects who like this smell include dung beetles and flesh flies, who really do like the smell of rotting flesh, and the plant grew to recognize that. But it also goes even deeper to ensure that the insects come. Corpse flowers are also able to warm up to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 36.7 Celsius, to further fool the insects, Pollock added. The insects think the flower may be food, fly inside, realize there is nothing to eat, and fly off with pollen on their legs. This process ensures the ongoing pollinization of the species. Once the flower has bloomed and pollination is complete, the flower collapses. I had a chance to see one of these one time, and I took a hard pass. Number 8. Lithops One of the biggest threats to plants isn't necessarily us humans for once. It's herbivores that decide the plant looks tasty and deserves to be eaten. To that end, the plant known as the lithops earned to blend into its environment by looking like a rock. This unique plant can be found in South Africa, and it's developed its body and color palette in order to blend into the rocks that reside in the area. They're so good at this camouflage that they have even fooled humans who know what to look for in terms of the visuals. There's more to it than just camouflage, though. They're trying to survive the harsh deserts in which they live. And so since plants don't easily survive in the desert, they want to make sure that they're not prematurely ended by animals seeking to get the water from their insides. Lithops come in a variety of colors, and it's only during the winter that they're exposed for the plants that they truly are. And now for number 7, but first if you're new here, be sure to subscribe before you leave and click the notification bell. We have lots and lots of new videos coming up. Number 7. Wellwishia mirabilis Just in terms of body style, the Wellwishia mirabilis is a pretty odd specimen mainly because it only has two leaves on it, and both are attached to a very simple stem. Yet the difference with the leaves of the Wellwishia mirabilis is that they keep growing. Eventually, the leaves grow so large that they fold in on each other and resemble a mane of hair from a human. As for the stem, it may start out simple, but it can grow very large. Not just in height, mind you, but in width and thickness as well. Height-wise, it can be up over 6 feet tall and over 24 feet in diameter. However, just as odd as its features is how long the plant itself can last. According to scientists, it can live anywhere from 400 to 1,500 years. I mean, no biggie, right? That makes it one of the longest-lasting plants in the world today. One of the reasons for its long life is its endurance. It's a desert plant and actually can survive without rainwater for almost five years. And for those who find the plant, well, they're in for a tasty treat, because the plant's got a nickname of Onion of the Desert. Number 6. Dragon Blood Tree In Yemen, there's a tree known as the Dragon Blood Tree, and it's one that catches the eyes of many who see it. First off, the canopy of the tree is very odd. It has an upturned, densely packed crown having the shape of an uprightly held umbrella. This is actually an evolution of the tree because it lives in an area that is very small in water. Because of this, the tree branches up and thus grants itself a wide area of shadow in order to reduce the evaporation of water near its roots. Then when you get to the bark, you find its other unique feature, its dragon blood, or more accurately, the resin that resides within the tree itself. Its color and texture remind people of blood, and the coloring of the tree resembles that of a dragon. 
Hence, dragon's blood. Weirdly, much like many of the myths about dragon blood, the resin from the tree is actually used as a medicine by some. Furthermore, the color and texture allow it to be used as a dye to those who would desire such things. Other features of the dragon blood tree is that every three to four years, it'll just go and shed all of its leaves at once so that new ones can grow. The tree also grows berries that change in color multiple times until they're ripe. That's pretty cool. Number five, purple pitcher plant. There are many plants in the world that are carnivorous, but what's unique is that many different species of them have different ways to get their prey. For example, the purple pitcher plant, say that three times fast, is one that uses its long bell and an intriguing smell to lure flies and other insects into its body. How it works is this. Think of the bell of the plant like an actual pitcher. At the bottom is a liquid nectar made by the plant. That liquid emits a smell, one that attracts all sorts of insects. The insects will enter the plant and touch the nectar hoping to eat it and get what it wants. But when it does, the insect is trapped and can't escape. Ironically, the purple pitcher plant and others like it don't kill the insect outright. They actually allow it to struggle and live until it dies naturally or it drowns via rainwater entering the plant's bell. Once the insect is dead, the plant will release special enzymes in order to break down its body and give the plant the nutrients that it wants. There are many different versions of purple pitcher plant, each with their own unique look, but the results they go after are all the same. Number 4. Buddha's Hand not the actual hand of Buddha from the Hindu faith, but rather a plant that actually resembles the interpretations of said hand. The Buddha's hand plant is also referred to as a fingered citron because the fruit of the plant grows in sections that make it look like fingers, with the exception that it has far more than five stalks on it. However, much like a hand, the plant has the capability to be in a closed hand and an open hand formation. It just depends on how the plant grows at the time. Its true origins are a bit unknown, but most trace it back to India or China, as that's where the citron fruits are known to reside the most. Speaking of which, China, India, Japan, and Malaysia often use the Buddhist hand plant to make perfume, as the fruit emits a rather pleasant smell. It's also used as a food, a medicine, an ointment, and true to its name, a religious offering. However, it must be in a closed hand formation, as this is what Buddha himself prefers. Number 3. Strangler Fig when you hear the word tree, the last thing you likely think about is parasite. And yet, with the strangler fig, that's exactly the case. This is a unique and strange tree that will actually engulf other trees with its roots in order to suck the life out of them in their own way. True to its strange nature, the strangler fig does not grow up from the ground. It'll actually remain in the ground as a seed for a very long time. And then it'll get caught by a bird or picked up or kicked up by something else and eventually land in the canopy of a tree. And when it does, it'll start to grow its roots by sending them down the tree, getting bigger and bigger and more expansive with every foot that it goes. It'll basically swarm the tree with its roots. And then it'll also grow upward to get the sunlight it craves. Because it's covering the tree in this way and preventing it from getting things like water and sunlight, the host tree will die. There are 12 different species of strangler fig in the world today. Number 2. Bear's Head Tooth Mushroom the bear's head tooth mushroom is a fungus that only grows on trees that are dying or dead, and that's just the start of its unique features. Its biology is that of being white, fleshy, and yet full of spines. Not one that can hurt you, mind you. In fact, the bear's head tooth mushroom is an incredibly helpful plant despite being attached to a dead tree. For example, the bear's head tooth mushroom is 100% safe to eat, which is almost always a risk with mushrooms. What's more, all four species of this particular mushroom are also safe to eat. Again, a rarity for mushrooms. There's a lot of research going on right now for what the bear's head tooth mushroom and its brother species will do for your body. Because it's said that it can help your nerves grow. It can help fight off roundworm and it can even fight off cancer. Number 1. Venus Flytrap Easily one of the most famous flowers in all of the world and one of my most favorites when I was a kid. The Venus flytrap is one of the rarest flowers in the world in that it's actually a carnivorous plant. To be clear, there are other plants that have traps that are meant to catch flies. But the Venus flytrap is one that openly goes and pretends to be a regular plant. And then, once a fly or other insect trips the tiny hairs on the inside of its leaves, it'll snap shut. 
and then it'll very slowly devour the food it's caught. However, not only is the Venus flytrap aware of its catchings, it's also conscious enough to know whether it's caught something worth digesting. So, for example, say a rock gets into the mouth of a Venus flytrap. It'll close on it, but then it realizes it can't be digested, and it just opens back up and spits the rock out. When it does get something it likes, though, it'll take 10 days to digest it thoroughly. As noted, the Venus flytrap is one of the most famous flowers on Earth, and as such, it has played a role in various forms of pop culture, including sci-fi shows and even being turned into a Pokemon. Well, thanks for watching. That does it. What do you think of these strange plants? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.